Hello. The people of the state of California have voted to relocate dangerous felons convicted of first-degree murder and sentenced to life imprisonment to the isolated island of St. Bruno with no walls, guards, or rules. The state doesn't spend taxpayers' money to maintain the criminals, and they in turn are forced to stay on the island until the end of their lives, be it natural, accidental, or at the hands of other criminals. A newcomer, a young girl named Carmen Sims, joins the group of 40 hardened outlaws the girl will have to face the ruthless dictatorship of their boss and find strength within herself, as well as like-minded people, to establish a different order on the island. A criminal condemned to life imprisonment is taken to the island in a small boat, accompanied by armed guards. Before boarding, the jailer reads out the judge's order to Carmen. You are hereby declared legally dead. Sign him. At the shore, Sims is horrified to see the bodies of the prisoners who have died on the island. The girl settles down on the sand and opens her backpack with personal belongings, while another criminal, freely wandering around the island, is already watching her from afar. The stranger turns out to be an inmate named Norman Milford, a local doctor who stealthily sneaks up on Carmen's small, well-set-up camp. The girl realizes that the man is not hostile and asks him about the other inhabitants of the island. From Milford, Carmen learns that about 40 people are isolated here and that there are hardly any women among them. In addition, everyone is already aware of her appearance on the island. Carmen spends the first night alone on the beach and the next morning packs her backpack and heads for the prison camp, the location of which Milford told her the day before. The leader of the criminals here is the skinny Bobby and his personal bodyguard, the tough big guy monk whom Bobby personally trains. The pair, along with the other inmates, meet Carmen, and the boss instructs Monk to welcome the new girl according to the rules. The naive girl extends her hand to the big man for a handshake, but instead of greeting her, the giant takes away her backpack. He greedily assesses the girl's figure and informs her that she will have to serve three or four men at once. Carmen instantly understands what kind of life the women on the island are destined for and refuses to share their fate. I don't get on my knees to nobody. In response, Monk begins to beat and humiliate Carmen which his boss observes with a satisfied smirk. The other inmates do not even attempt to help the girl, who begs for assistance, while the ruthless monk steps on her head with his heavy boots. In addition to the newcomer, there are three other women on the island who live in a separate hut. One of them, the Silent Bunny, pounces on Carmen after catching the girl in her sleeping spot. It turns out that Carmen is not allowed to lie down in any other corner either, so she decides to find herself another place to sleep. However, leaving the hut is not possible. A couple of prisoner guards immediately push her back in. Lee and Joy explain to the indignant girl that the women on the island are the property of the men and she will have to sleep with them, whether she wants to or not. This is the order that Bobby and his bully monk have established here. Upon hearing this, Carmen promises to wipe the insolent smirk off Bobby's face and set up different rules on the island. The next day, the girls go out to work with the male prisoners. Carmen and Lee have to pull the plow in place of the horses to dig up the heavy clay soil, while Joy earths up the already sown seed beds. During a break, Carmen asks Lee if anyone has tried to oppose the regime on the island. She learns that the prisoners who have attempted to do so have been killed, and that some have escaped and are hiding somewhere in the woods. Carmen comes up with the idea of joining the fugitives. What makes you think they're any better than these cruds around here? At this time, exhausted Joy tries to get some water from one of the thugs, but instead of a flask, receives a spit in her face. However, another man named Chino decides to stand up for the girl and a scuffle ensues between the criminals. They're about to attack each other with knives when Bobby and his henchmen show up and interrupt the confrontation. Deciding that the girl should be relieved of the work in the fields so they don't attract attention, Bobby sends them to build a warehouse. And already in the afternoon, Joy tries to create a heavy club from clay while Carmen and Lee are forced to carry heavy stones to construct walls. The skin on Carmen's arms is fraying from the heavy burden, and Lee asks Dr. Milford to come examine the girl. As the doctor rummages through his medical bag, Carmen complains to him. Why? When Milford met her on the beach, did he not warn her of the situation in the camp and let her escape into the woods? The sluggish doctor doesn't even have time to remove the bandages when an angry monk appears next to the couple and orders Carmen to continue working immediately. In the evening of the same day, the women, exhausted from their hard day's work, must serve the men. When the bulky monk reads them the list of clients for the night, Carmen suddenly realizes that everyone does the service except Bunny. It turns out that the girl doesn't work because she is Bobby's favorite and only appears in his bedroom. During the day, the men go out to lunch and the women serve them here as well, diligently putting food on their plates. At this time, a scuffle breaks out among the prisoners in line. An enraged man suddenly attacks another criminal with the clear intention of killing him. However, Bobby does not allow his goon monk to stop the fight thinking it's profitable to get rid of an extra mouth to feed. The other men do not intervene either, and the poor man gets stabbed in the stomach. Then the body of the dead prisoner is simply thrown off a high cliff. 
Carmen, Lee, and Joy also must do the laundry, accompanied by guards with knives. They go out to the pond, where they clean the dirty pants of all 40 felons. Four unfamiliar men are watching them from behind the hill, waiting for the right moment. They lightning quickly ambush the guards, and having neutralized them all, take the women with them, including Bobby's favorite, the Silent Bunny. The attackers turn out to be the prisoners hiding in the woods, led by A.J. Thomas. They bring the girls to their small camp and treat them to roast meat by the fire. The men are courteous, and the new acquaintances quickly find common ground. The next morning, the men pack up their camp to hit the road. It turns out that they move every day so that Bobby and his henchmen can't track them down. The girls decide to stay with them, while Lee even tries to convince AJ to attack the hostile camp and kill Bobby, despite the numerical superiority of the enemies. Wanna go find him and kill him? Why don't you try counting how many of them there are? During a rest stop, Joy learns how to shoot a bow, while Lee, who has a PhD, carefully examines the stone he has discovered. The girl tells her friend that she found saltpeter, and if she could get some more sulfur and chalk, she could make a mixture of gunpowder and craft handmade grenades. Meanwhile, Carmen, who is an expert in plants, brings her discovery to Thomas, an herb that can be used to make curare poison, to put on the tips of darts and arrows. Meanwhile, an enraged Bobby orders Monk to search the woods for the stolen women. Before long, as the unsuspecting group is relaxing at a rest stop, a gang of outlaws, who have tracked them down, attacks them. The fugitives manage to react quickly and escape. After securing shelter from his group, AJ attacks Monk, knocking the bastard off his feet. He dashes down the path full of deadly traps already prepared for the pursuers, in one of which, Monk's sidekick Larry immediately falls in. Defeated, Monk returns to the camp to tell Bobby what happened. At AJ's camp, there is a wounded man too. Chicky is bleeding out and is on the verge of life and death. However, the team has an advantage. They have managed to take Dr. Milford hostage. Realizing that a fierce confrontation with Bobby's camp is inevitable, the squad begins to prepare their weapons for battle. Carmen extracts the curare poison, which can kill an enemy in 10 seconds. While Carnell, meanwhile, brings Lee a huge stone of saltpeter to make homemade grenades. As the partners discuss how to get sulfur, AJ shows up and informs them that they are ready to bury the now deceased Chicky. Along with them, to the poor man's grave, goes Dr. Milford, who has decided to stay with the group. At Bobby's camp, meanwhile, a local engineer designs a small radio receiver for the leader, with which, the boss intends to pick up the radio waves of the guards who bring food to the island. Lee manages to obtain all the ingredients needed for the homemade grenades, and the men carefully crush them into powder, which Lee then pours into the aluminum flasks. Absorbed in their work, the friends don't notice Bunny leaving the camp. Only after a while does the group notice her absence, and they quickly rush out to look for the girl. Bunny herself, meanwhile, is leisurely splashing in the cool water by the waterfall, as AJ, Monk, and their accomplices approach her from different directions at the same time. The thugs manage to get to Bunny first. The girl desperately tries to fight back, but Monk and his henchmen take her to Bobby's camp. It turns out that they need the girl to carry out a villainous plan, which the boss is going to pull off the next morning, when the boat with supplies will arrive at the shore of the island prison. The next day, Bobby and his accomplices tie the defenseless girl to wooden poles on the coast. The villain rips the shirt off her body, then whips Bunny's bare back. Carmen, Lee, and Joy, who have set out to find their friend, are already watching this scene from the top of the cliff. When Lee goes off to get help, the girls have to meekly observe Bunny's torture, so as not to thwart the plan to rescue her and not get caught by her enemies. Noticing a boat with guards approaching and leaving the battered Bunny as bait, Bobby and his associates hide in an ambush. His trick works. After unloading the crates of food, one of the guards, taking pity on the girl, decides to free her from captivity. Losing their vigilance, the guards do not notice how one of the prisoners sneaks onto the boat. He kills the helmsman and using his gun, shoots the wardens on the shore. In the meantime, Bunny manages to escape, and Bobby and his accomplices show up on the shore, take all the firearms, and head for the camp, leaving one of the prisoners to look after the boat and the food. The man on the watch is attacked by AJ's squad, who were in an ambush on the shore. They kill him with poisoned curare darts and take the fuel from the boat. In the meantime, a tormented Bunny comes out of hiding. The next day, armed and ready to attack, the fugitives show up at Bobby's camp. The huts and territory of the settlement appear empty, and AJ realizes that the adversaries have prepared for their arrival and are hiding in ambush. Nevertheless, the group disperses around the area to set traps. First Milford, Joy, and Bunny head for the drain pipe that leads to Bobby's bunker. Pouring fuel into it, they leave Bunny nearby, who will ignite the fire at the signal. The others surround the perimeter of the camp and begin bombarding the huts with homemade grenades. In response, the enemies fire back with stolen machine guns, but this does not save them from the apt Carnell who manages to take out most of his enemies with just a pistol. But the confrontation continues in hand-to-hand -hand combat. The fugitives clearly win it, 
so the cowardly Bobby begins shooting at them from his fortified bunker. The villain manages to kill many men, including Carnell, and the group is forced to hide in an ambush. Lee desperately starts detonating the remaining grenades and destroys the hut along with the criminals, but eventually she herself gets shot in the back by Bobby. Besides Bobby, Monk is the only survivor. Together they hide in the bunker, which becomes a trap for them. The fugitives set fire to the fuel, and the bunker explodes into the air. Bobby catches fire like a torch and burns alive in front of his enemies. His henchman Monk remains alive, but permanently loses his sight because of his severe burns. With Bobby's death, the old order on the island prison perishes as well. The former fugitives build a new camp, have pets and children, and the new arrivals are no longer greeted by ruthless criminals, but by members of a large, friendly community. As always, you'll find the title of the movie in the description. In the meantime, let us know in the comments. Do you think a peaceful life on an island is possible? Or is it merely a utopia? And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next awesome retelling.